Hello everyone, uh, my name is Hugh Dancy. I'm here because I'm in, uh, I'm acting in Venus and Fur, which is on Broadway at the moment. I'm here at broadway.com to take your questions, whatever they may be. A producer once threw an ashtray at me in an audition, uh, an, an American producer, um, who was trying to prove his point, I think, that, that American actors were much better coordinated and generally physically capable than British actors. And, and, and he said, you see, we should really test people by doing things like this, and threw an ashtray at me. And it, and it turned out that it was in two pieces and it separated in midair. And I actually caught both of them, but not the cigarettes, which landed on me. That was one of the, no, that was the most demeaning thing that has happened to me. Uh, in an, in an audition room, but otherwise it's been pretty, pretty gentle. Uh, well, I've, I've played a drunkard um, a couple of times, uh, once on stage and once uh, in evening um, on screen. And what I discovered was that uh, different characters um, are very different drunks. Um, the character in Journey's End was drinking to, uh, to deal with the fact that he was terrified of the situation he was in, um, namely the First World War, uh, and he didn't want to show any weakness. And, um, <clears throat> and the character in Evening, Buddy, was, was, uh, couldn't handle his family and, and was not facing up to various other things about himself. So, so f neither of them are, are in any, any way like me when I'm drunk, which is very infrequent but I've been told I'm just a fantastic drunk. I don't know if there is a trick, really. Um, I, I sometimes think that uh, having an ear for accents is something to do with moving around a bit when you're a kid, and, uh, and if, you've, if you move through different places with different accents, which happened to me, I went to boarding school when I was 10. Um, into, I went to the, from the Midlands, the middle of England, down to the south, and um, basically my accent changed in about four months, which was self-preservation at that age. You just want to fit in. And I think that that may be something to do with it, but that is entirely my theory. I've never, never read any scientists that agree with that particularly. Um, and I think it's maybe easier going from English to American um, because, because it's about relaxing, um, you know, just relaxing the sound, uh, softening the consonants. Laura was, you know, she carries the whole show and she is also a producer on the show, which means she's got additional responsibilities and she's kind of trying to wear both those hats simultaneously. And the fact that she was able to do that and give such a brilliant performance, uh, in my opinion, and and that she took me under her wing and welcomed me into the show and, and kind of showed me the ropes. Um, I was, uh, was very impressive just on a like, personal level. Uh, she was lovely to work with and obviously as an, as an actor, it was a, a privilege for me to work with her. I came to Adam not knowing anything about, about Asperger's, about that condition. I mean, I literally sat down and read the script um, that was sent to me by my agents uh, without any kind of covering letter. Um, so I read it not knowing what I was getting into and it was only a third of the way through when he says, when he says to, um, to Rose Byrne's character, you know, I have Asperger's. I thought, oh, that's interesting. I, thought, I knew there was something up with this guy. So I went, I Googled it. Um, so it was a huge learning curve for me. I mean, I was aware of how good the script was because I, I could recognize the structure of it. The, the, quality of it, but, but I had to go away and educate myself. And I suppose what I came to realize that the most, I think the most central point of the movie was that the, this guy is not his condition, that he is like everybody else on the autistic spectrum, uh, a unique individual, um, just as we all are. And, um, and, and my challenge I felt was to try and capture what was, um, what was most Adam about him, if you like, as opposed to just what was most Aspergian about him, or at least combine those two things.
it's interesting. The, uh, obviously, the play is very intimate in some ways, but I don't think it is in the way that people imagine. I've spoken to people that have come that have come to see the play and after to say, "Oh, you're so close. What's that like being so physically close to somebody?" We barely touch in the play. Uh, all the intimacy is created by moments that don't quite happen or um, tension between us. And and in fact, if there was more. You know, if we were grabbing each other, um, then all of that tension would be dispelled. So the work that we did in the rehearsal room was was kind of building up that tension um, between the two characters and and obviously getting to know each other. And, um, and it's so it is a it is an intimate thing that doing the play every night for an hour and three quarters because you're in that relatively confined space with with one other person and you're really just circling each other. Um, but but perhaps not in the way that you imagine. I went to a, from the age of 13 to 18, I went to an all boys school, an all male boarding school in the south of England. And there was, there was a girls school. There was an all girls boarding school about two miles away, which was a recipe for the fun <laughs> and trouble, I suppose. Um, but it did mean that our day-to-day -day interactions were a bit limited. Um, and uh, so, so what can I say? We, we, we did the best we could. It's one of the reasons that I got into acting, I think. I mean, not, not consciously, but um, it, it, at my school, the theatre, we had a pretty good theatre, like a working theatre. And it was one of the only um, areas of life that girls were involved. You know, girls were <clears throat> not bussed in, but, but brought in. From, from other schools um, or the, the daughters of teachers if they wanted to get involved. Um, and for me, as a, I mean, for, forget hormones or dating, it was just nice to have, to be in the company of uh, females. There's some truth to saying, I mean, that, that if you're wondering whether you should be an actor or why you're an actor, you really have to consider you need to do it, some part of you need to do it. And that's definitely true for me. I, I was drawn to it from the minute I started doing it. And even as a, as a teenager, I, uh, it was kind of, I knew this was the thing. But I don't believe that that means I would be lost if I couldn't do it. I'm, I'm pretty resourceful. I would have found something else. I, I have no idea what it would have been. I mean, maybe something in the arts, maybe something in publishing, but I don't know, maybe I'd have been a dentist. Who knows, a hairdresser, anything. Thanks everybody, um, thanks for sending in your questions. Uh, please come and see Venus in Fur. It's a great night of theatre and I hope to see you there. Bye.